Welcome to NPTEL. I am Professor Joyanto Das from IIT Kharagpur, Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering, and I will be teaching you advanced materials and process. In the last four classes, we have tried to understand what are these advanced materials, what is metastability, what is their connection between the metastability, functional behavior and advanced materials. So, today we will continue those discussion more. So, let us see what has been discussed so far. So far we have discussed about the structural materials, different type of structural materials and also some of the functional materials had been discussed which are also well known as emerging materials. And uh, today we will continue the discussion along the direction of smart materials, some of the energy storage, electronic materials and so on which are very much relevant and connected with the subject matter. Let us have a look at one of the uh, smart material. In the last class, we had discussed about piezoelectric effect and today we will be discussing on a smart material which is a alloy. So, let us assume that we need a rivet and we have to join two different material using a rivet and here in this place we have no access. So, that manually we can hammer this position and to join. So, this smart material as an example like nickel titanium nitinol we can take in such a shape of the final one and we have formed such a shape at a temperature which is above the transformation temperature. Here transformation means we are talking about the austenite temperature which transform from martensite. So, here at temperature austenite finish temperature all the phases are austenite, okay. all the grains they are in austenite phase. And now, if I take such a shape and let us say cool it down, cool it down means T which is less than TTR or transformation temperature, then the same shape will be there, the shape will be same. However, the phase will be no longer austenite, but here it will be martensite. Okay. And now, in that particular phase, we deform this shape into here. So, we straightened these two sides in such a way, so that we can push it and fit it into this hole, which has been made in order to join these two different plate. So, now we are talking about temperature which is below the transformation temperature. So, in case of martensite austenite or austenite to martensite this transformation here the four temperature are very important martensite finish, martensite start, austenite start and austenite finish and definitely this temperature is higher austenite finish is higher than austenite start and martensite finish so on. So, temperature increases along this way. And now assume that here we take such a shape after giving some strain and it becomes straightened and we simply push it through the hole which has been made here. So, we simply insert and then the operating temperature is greater than austenite 
finished temperature means T operating is greater than austenite finish. And you see we simply take or make without any kind of hammering the same shape, the same shape has been achieved as it was initially. So, this is called remembering the original shape or shape memory behavior. Now, there are many different uh, 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 scientific explanation behind this and um, metallurgical aspect, there are understanding, a lot of understanding, lot of research has going on along this direction to understand such behavior and they are really, really very useful material which I will discuss in a minute. But try to understand that if we have no such access in a region where we can deform such a material, however, we can simply get the same shape as it was initially just simply changing the temperature and initially bend it below this transformation temperature. And let us have a look what is the reason behind it, the metallurgical reasons or the science behind it. Here I talked about austenite, definitely austenite is a phase which transform into martensite upon cooling. So, if you cool it down, if we cool it down then austenite transform into martensite okay. and this temperature definitely in be the complete martensitic transformation from austenite will occur when the temperature is less than martensite finish. And when martensite transform from austenite due to the phase transformation and the shape strain, there are twins form. Okay. So, twinning in martensite is a very mandatory criteria in order to achieve shape memory behavior. We will discuss all these things in detail in later classes, but at this moment let us understand this matter in this way that austenite transform into martensite upon cooling and that martensite contain twins, many twins. However, these twins are two different type which is shown one as a empty and another one in a hatch. Okay. So, these are the two different type of twin. So, I marked here as type 1 twin or let us say this is type 2 twin hmm. and then we deform it. And so, after deformation we have given some strain and type 2 twin has grown. You can see that the, that the region of type 1 twin is always less than the earlier case. So, type 2 twin has grown in expense of type 1 twin and which help us to accommodate the given strain. So, at the final stage you see almost it is only type 2 twin. And now, if we heat it, then again all these twin will vanish and this martensite will transform into austenite at temperature above austenite finish temperature. Okay. And here the same thing, here this is this particular uh, geometry was in austenite because T is greater than the the uh, the temperature of austenite finished temperature and then we have deform we have cooled it down. So, we get martensite which is the same as here and then we took this martensite and deform it. Okay. We have given strain in order to achieve such a shape which has been inserted through the hole and finally, when the material is heated then we get back the same austenite shape as it was initially. So, this is the mechanism underlying mechanism of shape memory effect and definitely it is a very smart material or smart metal. Now, there are huge number of application of such smart metal or shape memory neutral null alloy, there are many alloys has been developed. Uh, so, let us have a look. 
So, like the neutral wires which was used in, in Mars Pathfinder and, and uh, for using some antenna which open and close due to temperature variation. Okay? Or, or even you can put some, some of these antenna in the polar region where there is temperature gradient or there is a huge thunderstorm goes on. And so, uh, there are also uh, these uh, particular material used as a strength in, in heart operation. Okay? So, these are some self expanding material uh, that, that, that simply goes inside the, the vein and simply expand at a given temperature and avoid the blockage, uh, uh, which is one of the major reason for any kind of heart failure. Also, we develop many different kind of miniaturized working robots, where the movement of these legs are achieved due to the shape memory effect of neutrino. Also, there are robotic hands, uh, which definitely need such kind of smart material or, um, or shape memory effect. Now, if you want to shape your teeth, then also you need to tighten and, and, and to give a proper shape. So, how to do that? You initially make that shape, you deform it, then you simply uh, raise the temperature and then get back the shape of the teeth you want uh, which will be tied. Uh, Let us say if you have some uh, broken uh, some of the bones, then we simply uh, screwed this kind of shape memory or smart uh, metal plate and uh, for tightening purpose, if we uh, 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 heat uh, this material uh, into the temperature which is the operating temperature and definitely the, the austenite finish temperature should be below that and it will give some stress and it will automatically tighten your broken bones. So, these are uh, really, really smart material and, and definitely uh, we have to study this as a advanced material uh, because it, it does our job. Now, let us have a look to some other kind of uh, material, functional materials that I was discussing uh, like a uh, like a like a electronic materials. Okay. So, uh, what do we mean by electronic materials? Like the physical or chemical properties of this functional material are very much sensitive to the change of the environment such as temperature or pressure or let us say electric field or magnetic field or let us say some of the optical wavelength or let us say some sort of absorbed gas or molecule or pH and then we can change their properties and we can use these functional materials. So, one of these such a functional material is like electronic materials. We all know about semiconductor, uh, this is one of the very much useful material like light emitting diode LEDs and let us say some of the photo detector or let us say photovoltaic devices. So, um, I show you here a, a, a simple image of a such a photo detector, you can see how it looks like, but the type of semiconductor that is used, uh, we all know that there are two major type, one is the n type and the p type and the element which is definitely required in order to prepare those like boron, aluminum, gallium, indium and let us say um, uh, phosphorus and arsenic and so on and definitely we need silicon, silicon is the base actually and we add them in order to achieve a, a, a purposely which kind of hole or, 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 or uh, n type or p type we really need. And definitely they have a large use in kind of photovoltaic devices or let us say LEDs. So, uh, these are also very much functional materials and we need uh, a lot of them for, for our, our uh, uses. So far, the technology, different technology has been developed for these electronic materials and um, like LED or photovoltaic. In case of LED, the element that are commonly used like gallium or let us say indium and rare earth. However, we can somehow make some better LED or let us say, uh, let us say organic based liquid crystals or organic based LEDs we can develop, but if we have to develop such. Uh, uh, such kind of devices, then the use of zinc, manganese and, and uh, sorry magnesium, silicon or other kind of uh, metal organic based compounds that will simply increase and we had to look at that. 
At the same time, in case of photovoltaics, thin film technology, we uh, use this gallium indium as a critical element. However, the silicon based cell or let us say cadmium, tellurium, these are often used and maybe they can partially replace some of these. Um, at the same time, uh, for nickel based metal hybrid batteries, which are uh, uh, common technology known and we use as a rare earth or cobalt uh, for making those nickel based uh, batteries. Um, this could be replaced by nickel, uh, lithium ion batteries, which is a, also a advanced material and, and definitely the use of these elements will increase like lithium, cobalt or let us say uh, uh, manganese. In case of electric drive motors uh, for electric vehicles, we use permanent magnet and neodymium iron boron is well known as a permanent magnet and uh, it is also energy material and uh, definitely alternative motor types without rare earth may be also useful. Um, and also if we need to do that, then the use of copper or ferrite will also increase. So, you can see that there are plenty of opportunities uh, to, to conduct research as well as to develop advanced material and we need to know the present state of the art of all these different kind of material uh, and so on. Like uh, for energy storage, uh, like we can store energy or we can, we can, we can take energy or we can convert energy uh, from let us say from the sea or let us say um, or, or like a reservoir, let us say some sort of a pumped hydro storage or let us say compressed air uh, energy storage or let us say some sort of flywheel energy storage, we can use them. Okay. So, all the material required for developing those kind of technology is also advanced material. Also, let us say the for the thermal storage like hot water, okay, molten salt energy storage, these are also uh, the energy materials and let us say the, the phase change uh, material that can also be used for, uh, for storage and let us say the for the electrical storage also we need supercapacitors or let us say superconducting magnet energy storage devices and these are very advanced technology for, for energy storage. For a electrochemical storage like uh, sodium sulfur batteries, lithium ion batteries just I told a few minutes ago or let us say some sort of sodium ion batteries, they are quite capable of, of a high energy storage. Also we can uh, use some sort of uh, chemical reaction uh, for chemical storage like hydrogen or let us say synthetic natural gas or some other kind of methanol or ammonia. So, these are all different kind of energy materials. Uh, uh, because we call them as energy material because we use those material for storing energy. So, so energy storing is one of the important aspect uh, not only energy harvesting or energy conversion, but um, uh, in next couple of slide I will discuss uh, some of the conversion how we convert energy into other and one of uh, such very important energy uh, conversion material. Uh, means uh, like a thermoelectric materials. So, let us say from uh, electrical energy to thermal energy or thermal to electric, we lose a lot of energy during energy conversion because the efficiency is not so high. So, scientist has to develop a, a good or, or reliable material uh, that gives you a better efficiency in terms of energy conversion. So, thermoelectric material is one of such a opportunity or field where we convert directly the temperature gradient from a from a electrical voltage across the material. So, from 1960s you can see up to 2016 so many different material has been developed. I just tell you a few names like uh, density of stress distortion in lead tellurium and that basically gives you uh, a energy conversion uh, from, from voltage to temperature and let us say some sort of uh, band gap conversion and so on. So, here there is some silicon germanium, lead sulphide and copper sulphide, tin sulphide uh, and so on. So, these are so many materials uh, selenium based material, tin selenium and so on. So, they are all used as, as thermoelectric material and here we have plotted Z t max which is basically a figure of merit 
which represent the 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 quality of of a better energy conversion or the the um, the the energy conversion become much more better in terms of efficiency when we talk about the maximum efficiency of thermoelectric material for power generation and cooling so if we apply some electrical field and then we can create a hot side and cold side so we can use that cold side for refrigeration purpose so thermoelectric materials are very very useful even uh, for for getting some refrigeration in your car or maybe very small uh, refrigerator okay for portable refrigerator or let's say a lot of devices and so on so so application of such thermoelectric devices is a is a huge potential area of research and development so we uh, really need to show that uh, how these material or let's say some of the uh, alloys show such kind of thermoelectric effect so these are some of the recent uh, literature that that we have uh, tried to collect now another such important energy conversion um, came up um, recently as a uh, magneto caloric effect what it is really it is a it is a phenomena that is magneto thermodynamic phenomena uh, which causes a temperature change due to exposing a material uh, in a given magnetic field what does it mean it means that uh, you can uh, keep a alloy or a material in a magnetic field. So, under that magnetic field and temperature the entropy is, is, is fixed and then if you change the, the, the magnetic field then definitely there will be certain temperature change which causes adder radically. Okay. And uh, how to do that? Yes, if we plot a entropy here we are talking about magnetic entropy and temperature and we keep material into two different magnetic field immediately we open up a window of entropy change which causes a temperature change. So, this is the adiabatic temperature change that occur in a material it depends on whether it is positive or negative. So, this uh, effect is called as magneto caloric effect or inverse magneto caloric effect depending on whether the temperature change is positive or negative vice versa. So, how we really use such a material for refrigeration purpose? We adiabatically magnetize the material, then we extract the heat and then we demagnetize the material and then we can get the cooling. So, this is a cycle goes on. So, the first material that was developed that was a uh, gadolinium or, or let us say they are compounds and since uh, after that there are a lot of development goes on to develop let us say lanthanum based material or manganese or let us say some of these iron base or let us say some nickel manganese gallium system and there are so many alloy system has been developed and uh, definitely the performance of this material is, is very high than what we use for a vapor compression because ultimately all this energy conversion is linked with the Carnot cycle and the better the coefficient of performance and Carnot efficiency will increase and the higher the Carnot efficiency the higher the energy conversion from a magnetic energy to let us say to, to a, a, a thermal energy and so on. So, here this is just a schematic we have shown you that if we take a, a stacking of magneto caloric alloy plate and then we apply some magnetic field here then we can uh, pass uh, we can develop some cold junction and hot junction which is a very common in case of a Carnot cycle and then we can get a cooling effect or we can get also a heating effect. So, therefore, not only magnetic refrigeration can be exploited uh, from these magneto caloric material but also we can use as a heat pump. So, this is a very very uh, uh, great uh, phenomena that scientists has discovered and there are many uh, uh, companies these days came up with developing those kind of uh, magnetic refrigeration 
technique. Uh, at this moment, it may be a more expensive process, but uh, as the technology will develop with time, maybe after 20 or 30 years, it will give, uh, it will give you uh, a much uh, better performance. So, so far we uh, had definitely discussed uh, different kind of uh, uh, advanced materials so on and we can, um, we can um, uh, have a look to, to, to the, the main slide where we have started with on, on discussing different uh, structural materials. So, like here uh, like uh, the, the, the advanced high strength steels or let us say the lightweight alloys, advanced composite, particulate and so on. So, in this particular subject uh, from the next class onward, we will try to start with these glassy or amorphous alloys and their, their, uh, their, um, uh, their uh, scientific background of this material, how material has been developed what are the, the basis of uh, glassy structure and so on. And also we will uh, discuss uh, chronologically development of nanomaterials, development of uh, smart materials and uh, their detailed discussion on and definitely we will discuss some of the high strength alloys or let us say advanced alloys in terms of high strength steels, lightweight alloys and so on or let us say some of the high temperature silicides where a metallurgist has a large opportunity to contribute. And uh, with this, I believe that we, we will discuss all these things in detail in the next classes. Thank you.